Hi, I'm Angie Daly with ICEV. Thank you for joining us for our Skills for Life session. We are excited to have Angela Sweep with us from Wyoming. Angela, please go ahead and introduce yourself and you can get started. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Angela Sweep. I'm a family and consumer science teacher in Lyman, Wyoming, and I'm also the Wyoming FCCLA State Advisor. Um, my family, I have three kids. My oldest is 17, he'll be a senior this year. And then I have a son that's 14 that will be a freshman. And then my daughter Adeline is 10 years old and will be in fifth grade. Um, as a teacher at a sm small school in Wyoming, um, we have about 225 students in grades nine through 12. Um, in a high school, I only teach part-time. So I'm there for four periods of the eight period day. Uh, I teach family and consumer sciences, um, and it's a challenge to find how we can offer the different career pathways and meet the students' needs when there's really not very many kids, and I only have four class periods. Um, family and consumer sciences are uh, life skill courses, so everything that I teach I feel like is a life course. As I talk to my students, um, at the beginning of the year, I tell them I love family and consumer science because I feel like no matter what career path they choose, they will always still use my classes in their everyday life. Um, but they also have the cho choice to choose a career pathway with the things that we're teaching and that we're learning. So FCCLA has targeted specific career pathways in human services, hospitality and tourism, education and training and the visual arts. So at a small high school, to be able to offer courses in each one of those career pathways is definitely a challenge. If we just went off of enrollment for the classes that, you know, and I did one class per class period, I would basically have probably two basic foods classes, one child development course, and one second level foods course. It'd probably be the sum total of what we could offer our kids. But we decided that we needed to get creative um, with our scheduling and offer more electives. It's one of the big challenges um, in a, a small school is offering enough electives for the kids to especially um, check out their interests and provide some career readiness um, education classes. So what we decided to do would not have been possible without ICEV. Um, what we did is we decided that all of my class periods, all four class periods, would offer all of our family and consumer science courses. Um, the students can then take any class of their interests, of their career pathway, around their other schedules. So this allows for students to take um, classes that are only offered one time, such as a choir class or a band class, and they can still take my classes around that, those schedules. Um, through ICEV, they work independently, or if there happens to be a group of them in that class period in that same course, they work together through the ICEV courses. So on the left of the screen, sorry, on the right of the screen, you can see what my ICEV looks like. I have early childhood education, fashion design, child development, interior design, adult living, basic foods, baking, nutrition and wellness, culinary arts, and then the certifications, um, the different tests and certifications that my students can take. Some of the extra courses that are not listed there that I do teach are uh, clothing and construction, sewing classes um, that are the secondary level of fashion design. Um, we also have a quilting course that is tied to our interior design career pathway. Um, so um, it sounds like a lot. I have 10 courses being taught in the course of four periods, but because of ICEV, it's very easy for me to combine ICEV with my Google Classroom and give them um, activities and assignments, the material that they need. Um, they have the PowerPoints, you know, material, they have the videos and the activities and notes and tests and everything all ready for us. So it's very easy for me to manage. So this is one of the ways that I have um, de decided to help myself in managing everything. 
I have these wonderful yellow cabinets <laughs> in the back of my room. Um, and this is just one side of the room. So I took one picture. So I just have a sign for each of my classes. And then the, the blank white underneath it is um, like contact paper whiteboard. So it's a whiteboard that each week I write um, the schedule Monday through Thursday, we have a four, four day school week. And so Monday through Thursday, all of their assignments are, are listed there. And um, they can see the complete picture of what they're supposed to do during the week. And also it helps me to have a quick reference for all of this <laughs> that's going on. Um, then I have, you can see it's summertime, so all the chairs are up, but each table is designated that all of my foods sit in a certain place in the room, food, basic foods classes. All of my adult living kids always sit. It helps me to manage that way. I make the rounds and check in with each of them every day. Um, my sewing students are over on the other side. We have these um, lining the wall in, in my classroom. And so I can put students over at these stations as well. Um, but I and then make the rounds each day, checking in with them, talking through their assignments, looking at their assignments, making sure they're doing what they're supposed to do and helping with them with any questions that they have. We also rotate, you can see the kitchens over here, um, between basic foods, culinary arts, nutrition and wellness, and baking. None of them are in the kitchen on the same day, um, but they rotate. Um, we almost always have somebody working in the kitchens every day of the week but it's a different class. Um, the nice thing about that is students look forward to that because my rule is, is that nobody can sit and smell that without having to getting to taste it. So they basically get to taste the samples of what we're creating, even if they're not in the class. So the basic or the, um, excuse me, fashion and design students get to taste what the basic foods kids are making. And I feel like that's one of the biggest promotions for all of my classes. You get to taste a lot of food throughout the semester. So um, that sounds like a lot to um, manage, but it, with ICEV it's manageable. But my first year I found that the hardest thing for me was managing all the grades because every assignment that they did, whether I had one student or I have 25 students, it's still an assignment that I have to collect and then get back to them. And I was spending so much time on my computer just trying to update the daily activities and the assignments. So I, in between my first and second year doing this, I decided I needed to come up with a different uh, method of grading. And so I started looking around and I found um, this myclassroomeconomy.org. Um, there's the website and um, it has helped me a lot and it has saved me a lot. And I feel like it's a great way to teach life skills in all of my classes. Um, financial literacy and money management is an incredible important life skill. So what we do is we set up our classroom as an economy. Um, is a financial institution basically. And so each week that they come into class, they're told that they are earning a paycheck. And so they collect a paycheck um, just by being in class. Um, and so on here, they would um, put the date, they would write paycheck and make a deposit into their bank account, their bank log, and then the total balance. Um, then I have to initial all of their um, activity, all of their financial um, records. And so they have a balance um, because of the paycheck. But in the real world, we all have to pay bills. So every week they have to pay bills. So we talk about the things that are needed to make our classroom work. Talk about electricity, water, heat, um, that those utilities need to be paid. So each week they put the date, and I just have them do it on Mondays. Everybody does it on Monday. We pay our bills on Monday morning. And so um, they put the date, each of those utilities listed, and a withdrawal for how much they are. Um, and then the running balance. They also have to pay taxes. <laughs> we talk about how no one can escape taxes. That's just part of it. And they also have to pay desk rent. 
They have to have a spot in our room to do their work and their assignments. So they have to pay their rent. So those are the bills that they have to pay. They have a weekly paycheck, but then each of the assignments that they do um, are worth an amount of money. If they're doing and performing their, their job at a high quality level, then they're gonna get all of the, the amount possible for that assignment. But based off of how well they do, they're, um, and it's basically just like points per, for an assignment. Um, I usually have daily activities and daily assignments worth $50. And so if they you know, don't do a good job or don't only complete half of that assignment, then they're only gonna get $25 into their bank account. Um, and then um, if they have a test or a quiz, it's worth more money. Um, we also have consequences for some classroom behavior that affects their money. Um, so if they are late, that's a $50 fine. And so it comes out of their bank, um, bank log. Um, if they're caught cheating, that's $200. And so we talk about all these things at the beginning because at the workplace, in a work environment, you have to have trust, you have to be responsible. And so those things, you know, it causes a great discussion at the beginning of the school year. And um, so this is a very modified system of what um, the My Classroom Economy org actually has. Um, I modified it to make it work for my classroom, but I would recommend everybody to um, take a look at this if you're interested. Um, there is a detailed guide of how to set this up at multiple levels. So they have like sixth and uh, fifth and sixth grade. They have seventh and eighth grade. If you want to run it something similar in those different classrooms if you want to go bigger they have some that um, each member of the class applies for different jobs and then they get jobs within the classroom um, so there's lots of levels that you could take it to but for each grade level there's a detailed guide of how to do this um, and it goes clear up to seniors and so if you look you can make it work for you I love the idea because of this focus on financial literacy, the things that we're hearing that students are not prepared um, financial, for the financial things that they need to do when they come out of high school. And I think this is a great way that we can make them responsible um, for keeping track of all of their assignments, everything that they have. Um, I like this because they, they know what their grade is at all times. Um, based off of the bank log, but they are responsible for recording it. There isn't any, um, well, Mrs. Sweep, you lost my assignment. It's not on me, it's on them. When they do an assignment, they show it to me, we talk about it, we talk about what balance it is, and then I sign it off. Um, I love the dialogue that it creates between me and the students. Instead of them just, what was happening my first year, they just turn it into a basket and there would be things that I wanted to talk to him about, but it was after hours when, you know, um, they were all long gone by the time I actually looked at it. And so it gives them either the opportunity to just know what their grade is, or I can just say, you know what, you need to do this to get full points and then they can do it and get their, their full money. Um, it helped a lot with the different activities and assignments that were going on all around, you know, those 10 different subjects. Um, and it made them accountable. So then they have it on this bank log and then every two to three weeks, I would do a bank log check. And so at that point, the students would turn the bank log into me and I would put a bank log check number one into the grade book and it then converted to the points and it was the amount of money that they should have. I turned it into like a, a percent grade. The amount of money they should have had based you know, or the amount they actually had divided by the amount they should have had um, is how I did that grading. Um, and so then it made it that I was actually only having to grade every two to three weeks, enter into the computer every two to three weeks, but performance grading was actually happening every single day. Um, and it was based off of, um, you know, go back and do this again, or you got part of it, but you need to go deeper into this. And there was a lot more dialogue going on than when they just turned it into the box for a grade. Um, so this worked really well for me. Um, I, there's still a couple things that I'm going to modify and change for this upcoming year, but I, I like the life skill aspect. 
And I'll tell you at the beginning of the year when I first introduced it, there was a lot of grumbling. Like, why do we have to do this? Why, this is stupid. You know, why do we have to pay our rent? But at the end of the semester, there was a lot of comments like, yeah, I can see why you did this. And it helped me a lot. And as the semester went on, I got a lot better at it. And it, then the second semester, students that had my class in the first semester, they were pros and it was super easy. And the other kids kind of struggled and I had to help them know what does a deposit mean and that you add that number to your balance. What does a withdrawal mean and they subtract that balance and the running balance is how much money you actually have. And that is a great um, activity for them because that's how every bank account works, whether it's a savings account or a, um, a checking account or a mutual fund or whatever, a credit card, just that basic skill of understanding that a deposit means you added something, a withdrawal means you took it out. It is such a basic thing that our kids are not understanding. And so to give them that weekly practice, daily practice in doing that, by the end, I felt they understood and were able to even um, maybe more mentally understand what's happening with bank accounts. So thank you. This is a quick overview of what I do. Um, I love ICEV and how it's helped us provide for the needs of all of our students, especially in our small school to help those few, maybe three or four fashion design students be able to have fashion design opportunities um, and to let our culinary three kids be able to, to still have culinary three, um, even if it's only two or three kids. I love it. Um, I hope that it's given you some ideas and things to think about, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have at any time. Thank you. Angela, thank you very much for your time today. Um, she will be available for our question and answer session uh, that can be found in the link below her presentation. Uh, don't forget to enter the uh, session completion code to receive your points in your professional development. And uh, thank you all for joining us.